A good morning, brothers and sisters from St. Mary's Church, Fan Down, and our brothers and sisters across the nations of the world. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The psalmist says, I was glad, very glad, when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of God. In the house of God, there is peace. In the house of God, there is divine direction. And in the house of God, there is joy. Let everything that has breath praise He in the Lord. And I pray that wherever you are uh, watching from, that you'll be praising God today, despite the circumstances that all of us face. But the name of the Lord be exalted because God is good and all the time. He is good. My name is Patches Chavala. I am Tim Vicar here at St. Mary's Church in Fendown. It's a fantastic church and you know when everything settles down I would like to invite you to come and worship uh, with us. One of the things that uh, we do appreciate at St. Mary's Church in Fendown is that we are a people of celebration. And I'm aware that last week and the week to come, our brothers and sisters in our church have been celebrating their birthdays. To them, I say happy birthday. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you going. Uh, may the Lord anoint you afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go, may you radiate the presence of God and become a blessing and a gift uh, to God's people. Uh, in this service, uh, there will be times of worshipping, uh, in singing, uh, in praying, and also in the reading of God's Word, and also at the end of it, I'll be sharing just some few thoughts uh, from the Word of God. Good morning, everyone. It's good to worship with you again this morning. Um, it's sad that we can't meet together, but it's a good reminder that as a church, we're not about a building, we're a family, and that wherever we find ourselves this morning, we can worship Jesus. So we're going to sing a song now called The Big Family of God. Some of us are big and tall, some of us are very small, some of us like pink and some like blue. Some of us like reading books, some of us like feeding us. That's because we're different, me and you. But God loves everyone he's made. to our Sunday morning church service at St Mary's. My name is Emma and this is Colin. We are going to talk to you today about Psalms and our reading today is taken from Psalm 27. The book of Psalm is full of praise and worship and it's the best praise and worship that you will find anywhere. What's that Colin? Ah, great question Colin. 
Colin wants to know where you can find the book of Psalms. Wow, it's roughly in the middle of your Bible. So if you open up your Bible, you'll find it in the middle. And today's Psalm is Psalm 27. My God is my light. My God is my saviour. Why be afraid? My God is my safety. My God is my home and I won't be afraid. Sure, I might get teased, I might get hurt, but I don't need to be scared. Okay, people will call me names and will try to bully me, but I will stand tall. That's right, Colin. Some days are bad days, that's okay. Some people say nasty things, that's okay, because I am hidden with Jesus in the safest place, in the arms of God, like sleeping in a tent like standing high on a tall rock where nothing can get me. With God's care around me, I will sing and dance and shout for joy. With God's face shining on me, I will be patient through bad days. I will be strong. Take courage, my heart, and lean on God. So today's psalm, and Colin is going to help me with this, was Psalm 27. And Remember, be strong, because God is with you. Have a great week, everybody, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Say bye, Colin. Bye. So it's the Pix family here this morning to lead us in prayer. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you because you are always good, because you love us, because you are kind, because you are powerful and because you are the God of hope. And we pray today that you would shed your hope abroad in our hearts and in the lives of our community and nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear God, please help those who are homeschooling and please help them to have the mind um, uh, to work and... Um, uh, for them to uh, understand it and um, uh, get on with it. Uh, amen. Amen. Dear God, please help those who are lonely to feel like they're not crowded, but there's at least another person next to them, and that other person is you, and that they'll they won't feel lonely, that they will feel like, just like, like they can have a friend to chat to if they are worried, amen. Amen. Hi Lord, we pray for um, those who are helping uh, the nation, we pray for the government, we pray your blessing on Boris Johnson and all in the government who are having to make some really hard decisions we pray your blessing on them your guidance your wisdom that is from heaven uh, on them and we pray also for those who are offering medical help for doctors nurses and everyone else who's involved in the nhs and just providing such amazing help at this time we just pray for your protection on them uh, pray for your wisdom pray for guidance pray for those who are ill, pray that you would heal them Excellent. right now. Mm. We know that nothing is impossible for you. Amen. 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 And would you join us now in the Lord's Prayer? Amen. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, St Mary's. Our Bible reading this morning is Psalm 27, verses 1 to 5. So if you'd like to take up your Bible and read along with me. I'm reminded that in Romans it says that faith comes through hearing the word. So may our faith increase this morning as we read through this psalm. So Psalm 27 beginning at verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, we are living at an interesting time. Uh, you all know around the world what's going on. Uh, you know, this situation does uh, affects each one of us in one way or the other. Uh, somehow, the, our normal has been disturbed. Uh, right now, as you can see, I'm doing this live thing from, uh, from my study, you know, and we can't be congregating together because uh, of the attack that we have about this pandemic. And uh, this is a time that has caused a lot of fear, uh, a lot of anxiety and uncertainty. And so many people don't know what's happening in the world and they don't know what they'll be facing the following day. A lot of jobs are at stake and people are fearful uh, for their lives. Um, the Chinese have an interesting word for crisis. I would call this time as a crisis, but the Chinese are the one word, uh, one interesting word for crisis. And it's uh, characterized by two words, danger and opportunity. And I believe in my heart that uh, despite the dangers that we face and the crisis that we face, there is still opportunity for us to serve God in one or the other and perhaps maybe see things differently from the way we saw things when everything was normal. And I pray for you that maybe you may take that opportunity to say to the Lord, Lord, Today, what opportunities have you given? Maybe it means you ringing someone and encouraging them by phone, you know, or helping out someone uh, shopping, or maybe just speaking a word of encouragement in somebody's life. There is an opportunity. And also maybe it may be time for you to have some time of reflection. These times are challenging and it causes us, we are Christians, to reposition ourselves, to hear the mind of God. But one great thing I love is that while everything has been a challenge and there's been danger and people have been scared, there's something that doesn't change. And what doesn't change is the word of God. The word of God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we can run to that word of God to be encouraged of the word of God. And this is what I'll be doing this morning as I just walk with you through some few verses from Psalm 27. So Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my light. This is the psalmist here saying, the Lord is my light. I wonder whether you would say the same, the Lord is your light. Here the psalmist is not saying the Lord is our light, but he says the Lord is my light. What he's saying there is that he has a relationship with his God. He has a relationship with him. He has walked with him, he has experienced him, he has encountered him in a very good and very appreciating way that the Lord himself has been fundamental to his life. The Lord is my light. He is my light in my darkness and he has given me life. But not only that, the Lord also, he is my salvation, he is my redeemer, he is my savior. And if the Lord is my light and also my redeemer and my savior, whom shall I fear, says the psalmist. Now you have to understand that David, the servant of God, who is called after God's own heart, has experienced so many things in his life. He has gone through the darkest moments of his life. And so for him to stand and say, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear, he is speaking from the point of reference. He's speaking from the place of experience. 
He has experienced God that even in the darkest moment, God has seen him through. And this is what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, that uh, even when we go through this pandemic that is causing a lot of people to fear, there is something that we can do. We can be confident in one thing, that the Lord is always good and has been faithful from the beginning to the end. And the Lord will not leave us nor forsake us. He will still carry us through. And all we need is to have that relationship with him. Like the psalmist would say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? He continues, the Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, stronghold is a word that means safety. He is my safe place. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. We are only safe in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ is our solid rock. This is where we all stand. He is our anchor. He is our rock. And the psalmist says, He is my fortress. He is my stronghold. Romans chapter 8 verses 31 says, What then shall we say in response to these things if God is for us? Who can be against us? Isaiah chapter 54, verses 17, who say, No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of God. So if you are a child of God and you are scared, be rest assured that the Lord will still protect you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not your own understanding, but in all your words, acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. This is what it is, folks. This is what it is. You know, we should not be afraid. You know, these things come and these things go. But in the midst of all danger, we have someone we can run to. And that is the Lord himself. In Peter, Peter would say unto us, Cast all your burdens unto me, for I care for you. And this is a burden on the world. We can look to God and trust him. And say like the psalmist, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He continues, the psalmist is not kind of uh, ignoring that danger is not there. The danger is there. In verses 2, he says, when the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my folk who stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks against me, even then will I be confident. Even when there is danger around me, I will be confident because I know the God that I serve. That this God I serve has proved, has proved to be faithful. I have seen him carry me through dangers. And so even this thing that I face, I can still stand with my head eye knowing that the Lord is in control and the Lord is going to take me through. This battle is not mine, but the Lord's. And so this is who I'm going to trust in. Interestingly enough, as we continue in these verses, verses 4 brings us to the core of this. It says, one thing I desire of the Lord. This is one I seek. So in the midst of danger, in the midst of fear that you and me have right now, there is something that we can say. One thing I desire of the Lord. And this is what I seek. Psalmist here says that he may gaze, he may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. So what the psalmist is saying here, what is important for him, even in the midst of danger, he is the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is liberty. In the presence of God, there is peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. And that maybe that's the peace that you need in the midst of all these things that are going on. In the presence of God, there is stillness. That stillness in the presence of God. And we can hear his voice. We can commune with him. We can enjoy him. And this is what is a priority for David. It is not the fears that are around. But it's the presence of God that is a priority to him. And you see, for us who are going through all these challenges that we are having, the fear, the anxiety, and the crisis, we can shift from being fearful to be hopeful only if we focus on the Lord. 
Only when we look to him. Only if we make his presence our dwelling place. If we can be still in his presence and enjoy his presence, we will find that the fear will go away. Because fear will not be our primary thing, but the Lord himself will be our primary thing. I don't know about you right now, what your primary thing is right now. With the situations that we are facing at the moment, what is so primary to you? Is it the Lord's presence or is it the fears that surround you? If it's the fears that surround you, it will take you down, it will discourage you, you'll be depressed. This is the trick of the enemy. But the secret in coming out of that fear and being hopeful is coming in the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, there is rest. In the presence of God, there is divine direction. In the presence of God, we are refreshed. And here the psalmist says, one thing I ask of the Lord. And this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, to behold his beauty and to seek him in his temple. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name when he is near. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. For he is a good God. He is a gracious God. In the presence of God. We are in the anchor of God. We hold on to him and thank him for his goodness. We trust him and enjoy his presence. He is our anchor. He is our foundation. But in the midst of fear, we can still trust him. Verses 5 says, For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Upon a rock. Upon a rock. That rock is Jesus. We used to sing a song a long time ago, and maybe sometime now people do sing, Rock of Ages, clay for me, let me hide myself in thee. Psalm 91, verses 1 says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Almighty High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and is my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. The question I'm wanting to ask you, brothers and sisters, in the midst of all uncertainties and the crisis that is around us, the fear of this pandemic, where is your trust? Is your trust in the systems? Is your trust in the property and the things that you have? Or is your trust in the Lord? As long as you trust anything else apart from the Lord, you are going to be living in fear. The only one who can take you out of that fear is the Lord himself when you find refuge in his presence. Brothers and sisters, the Lord encourages us here uh, in Psalms 46. I'd like you to read with me Psalms 46 and verses uh, 1, and I'll read some other verses. Verses 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in our trouble. Therefore, we lie not fear, though the earth gives way. Now, it's interesting, actually, when you get to verses 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. You see, you can only come to that place and, and appreciate that when you want to find the presence of God as your dwelling place. When you find that wanting to be in the presence of God is the greatest thing that you want to do, you find that there will be stillness within you. And you'll be so excited that God himself is in control and is taking charge of all the situations that are surrounding us. Perhaps this situation that has come over us, the, the, the situation that has brought so much uh, scare among us, is maybe an opportunity for us to have a new perspective. A new perspective of finding stillness in the presence of God. That being in the presence of God becomes a primary thing. And we want to behold his beauty and know him more and enjoy him forever. And I'm, I'm not talking about passiveness, but I'm talking about active trust and being mindful that the one that we worship is God. He's the creator of everything. He is the Lord. And this Lord is our anchor. He is our reference point. And in him we stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground. 
is sinking sand. This God will be exalted among nations. He will be exalted through this pandemic. He is God. The church of God has not died. The church of God will thrive and prosper. And the people of God will prosper. They will come through this knowing that their confidence is not in themselves and the systems that are there, but their confidence is in the Lord. The question I want to ask you now, where is your faith? Where are your priorities? Is it in the Lord? Is your trust in the Lord or in other things? Unless you make God your dwelling place and he becomes your stronghold, it will be tough this time. But if you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and him being your stronghold, you will run into him and you will be saved. As I said earlier on, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So how do we then move away from fear into hope? We can only move away from fear into hope. If the Lord becomes our light, if the Lord is our salvation, if the Lord is our stronghold, if we make God to be our dwelling place, his presence to be our dwelling place, if we desire to be in his presence, even when everything is falling out of place, yet still will we be confident. We will go through this, brethren. The Lord will see us through. Only trust in the Lord and all will be well. God bless you. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears. I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child Mother's word, you have chosen me.